Greenhouse 11.2 U2 was released on February 18th, 2019, and there is a lot of things going on here. And the good news is with the new interface, uh, I know not everybody loves it. I personally do prefer it. And there's, of course, been bugs found with any time you do a major uh, interface update. And they've been quashing those bugs. They quashed a just ton of them here. So this was a wonderful code update to that. And if you are unfamiliar with the couple of recent flaws that were found in Nginx uh, and Curl, they updated those as well. Those are some of the backend things on there. There was basically some uh, out of memory problems you could run into with some well-crafted packets sent to Nginx under certain circumstances. So you definitely want to have the update in terms of those. Hopefully, uh, this is generally behind a firewall and managed from a management network and not exposed to the greater internet as a whole. So you're Risk is hopefully mitigated by that. You can only you only worry about the things inside your network, which hopefully are trusted. Um, so those are the major things. A couple other things they brought back, which I get why they did it. Uh, and I'll bring it over here and we'll go over here to the services. We're going to go over here to the Samba SMB protocol. Um, they brought back a checkbox for enabling legacy SMB1 support. And I know this caused problem for a lot of people who are running FreeNAS in like a legacy environment, uh, being able to support it. This is a deprecated protocol that has issues and is not perfect uh, by far. I, it's got a handful of flaws, so people have moved on to it. Even Microsoft has abandoned this on, on systems. But I do realize if you have a legacy environment, hopefully it's locked down, probably not connected to the internet because we don't have any free NAS implementations like this, but we've run into where we have, uh, to this day, we still have a manufacturing company running their laser cutters um, off a series of Windows 95 machines, but not too much of a worry because there is no network connectivity because um, giving Windows, 9 machi Windows 95 machines lasers is scary enough as it is, but they're not online. So if you need SMP1 support, you can have it. Now, the thing that did break, the only problem I ran into is this, and you may run into this as well. You'll get an unbound local error variable bridge command. Uh, this is a problem with the jails. Now, I left one of my jails broken so I can walk you through what needs to happen to fix this problem. It's an easy fix, and it's related to a feature enhancement. So they added more network features for the jails, but some of your jails may not have a default network set because it's now a feature that didn't have anything in there. So if I tried to start this jail right here, I'm going to go ahead and start it. It should give me an, uh, that local bridge command not assigned. Please note, even though it's not running, we make sure, it, okay, it's definitely stopped. Because sometimes you get a weird, the first thing is you try to edit it, you get an error that it's running even though it's not running. So you have to edit this um, and a couple things that need to be done. So I turned DCP, oh, it's now stuck. Up. Oh cannot be changed with jail is running. So you, you've now seen the other side of this error message here. They're aware of it. There's a, a long place. So now we got to stop the not running, actually running jail. Well, it's running, but it's not running and properly working. Then we can go back to edit this jail. And there are two things I had to do to fix this. So one, the save button is broken because it sticks this here, DHCP not running. Delete that. Then go down here to network properties. VNet default interface and choose whichever interface you have as the VNet uh, default interface. For me, it's CXG v0 because we have this connected via 10 gig card. So this is where I want it. And then hit save. And it's all you have to do to fix it. So uh, yes, it did cause problems, so to speak, because uh, it had jails not running. But just doing that fixes it. And now the jail will get an uh, DHCP address and be online and up and running and working. So a minor problem, but I will leave a link to this that explains where to do it. And you watching this video hopefully figures out, shows you how to do it as well. It's a pretty simple thing there. The only weird thing is a save button won't do it. Uh, wouldn't click for me until I erased the uh, DHCP in there. That was whoop, right here. But it has the IP address now, but when it's not running, it gets stuck with DHCP there. Won't let you actually save it. Other than that, and that's a pretty minor flaw. I haven't had any other issues with the update. Um, I do recommend loading it. This, like I said, was a really minor issue that had a really easy fix. I do like that they have a few other workarounds. Uh, one of them was in iSCSI because I have seen this before when I was doing some testing. So they had some uh, not able to create iSCSI skins 
extents in the new UI. As a workaround, you just have to jump to legacy. This is still kind of a bug in there, uh, but they're working towards it. So if you're familiar with this, they're uh, actively addressing it, but it's not quite fixed yet. So still, the, you know, the new UI, like I said, I don't have a problem with it. I still feel the back end of this system is very stable. Um, the front end is where some of the problems are. And as you know, you still can get to the legacy UI if you have one of these edge cases where you have to do something very specific in there. But uh, overall, I still recommend loading it. But before you uh, have a panic attack about your jails, uh, that's the easy workaround for the jails. You don't need to revert back. But I have covered this before. The way FreeBSD and the way FreeNAS updates, um, it keeps a backup. So you can just set to the other, what they refer to as a slice in BSD, your previous install and roll back to it. So it creates a new spot on the drive where it installs it. So if you have to roll back, you can. Just don't do anything to the ZFS pools because when you do update to a new version, if it updates the ZFS, it will give you an option to upgrade the ZFS and ZFS can be upgraded, but not easily rolled back or downgraded. So if there's any feature changes, which I don't think there are in this particular, um, this picture update didn't really make any major ZFS changes. But overall, like I said, I loaded it. Um, other than the one minor issue there, it seems a little bit snappier when I go through. It loads the uh, menus here a little bit faster. I still have this happening sometimes where it decides it doesn't like the reports. That's been a flaw with this particular system, but not any of my demo systems I've tried. So only my one production server does this problem. And my guess is, as someone pointed out, it doesn't like my 10 gig network card uh, the Chelsea IO network card as well, because oddly, when I switch this to another network interface, it doesn't do this. Uh, but I don't know how to report it as a bug because it works, but it doesn't error out. So, And then sometimes it works perfectly fine and goes fast after it's been running for a little while. So that's my only other minor, uh, but minor complaint, because once again, I've talked about this before, uh, they still have, and they updated again, the net data that's in here. Net data is my, still my favorite way to uh, look at all the stats, not the basic ones there. And uh, they also made some updates in here to understand and have things report better. So if you're interested in loading uh, the update, it's available. Go ahead and download it. And as always, please back up everything before you load any updates, just in case everything goes wrong. All right, thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to this channel to see more content, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon, and maybe YouTube will send you a notice when we post. If you want to hire us for a project that you've seen or discussed in this video, head over to lawrencesystems.com where we offer both uh, business IT services and consulting services and are excited to help you with whatever project you want to throw at us. Also, if you want to carry on the discussion further, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can keep the conversation going. And if you want to help the channel out in other ways, we offer affiliate links below which offer discounts for you and a small cut for us that does help fund this channel. And once again, thanks again for watching this video and see you on next time.